What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Carl's Tips and Tricks video. I'm Matt from SB Fishing TV and today we're going to be talking about some musky fishing tips. So before we get into this video, I do want to put it out there that I am not a super experienced musky angler. I've been fishing for musky for the last two and a half years and I'm just going to share with you guys the things that I've learned as far as fish safety, um, some of the baits that you should be throwing and some of the rigs that you should have on your boat if it's your first time ever musky fishing. So I've got to say musky fishing is very, very close to the top of like my favorite fish to fish for. Um, I got into it one day when I was out fishing a lake that does have musky and I saw an older gentleman out there trolling around in a canoe like in the middle of December and I saw him catch two on a storm flat stick. So that's what really sparked my interest in it. I was thinking, you know, oh, that doesn't look too hard. I can just go out, throw some big baits around and catch musky. But in reality, it actually took me 60 hours to actually get one in the net and to be able to hold my first muskie. And it took me 50 hours to see my first fish. The first bit of advice that I can give you is don't let these fish get you down because they can be some of the most aggressive fish that you'll ever catch and they can also be some of the most stubborn too. So before we get into the baits and rods and setups and all of that good stuff, the first thing we're gonna talk about are some of the tools that you're gonna need when you go musky fishing. So first and foremost, you're gonna need a big net. And I mean like a big net, like one that I can fit in. So the reason that you need a big net, one, is because they're big fish. Like literally, I could fit in this thing, it's huge. This is how big of a net you're gonna want because once you catch the fish, you need to keep them in the water. While they are some of the biggest, most aggressive apex predators in the water oh wow that was almost dangerous once you pull them out of the water they're pretty weak and they can die pretty quickly so as soon as you get a fish in the bag you want to hang the net off the side of the boat and take care of getting them unhooked so as long as that fish is in the net and you're hanging it over the side and hanging out in there he's perfectly fine and it's good to go you do want to be quick with unhooking him pulling him out getting a quick picture video quick measurement whatever it may be but as long as you can get him back in the net and he's spending 99% of the time in there, he'll be fine on the release. So besides the giant freaking net, you're gonna want some tools. So the first tool that I'd recommend, and these have seen better days, that's for sure, but you're gonna want some very long handled needle nose pliers. And these are gonna be your best friend when it comes to unhooking some of these giant baits. So when the fish is in the net, they're staying fresh, you know, they're probably still gonna be a little wired and riled up. So do your best not to let them swing the bait into your hand or arm or head or whatever it may be. If you get hooked into a bait that's hooked to a muskie, it's not gonna be a good day. These hooks that we're talking about are big. I think they're size 10 treble hooks. I'll show you in a minute. They're huge, but they're also what you need to keep these fish pinned. Besides the long handled needle nose pliers, you're gonna want a good pair of hook cutters, which I don't have in the boat with me right now today because I'm bass fishing. And second, you're gonna want some jaw spreaders or, and I guess this is sort of a controversial tool in the musky world, but some of the spinning boca grips. The reason you don't wanna use a lip gripper like this with a musky is because these are not gonna spin. So if you grab them by the lip, and you got them nice and tight and that fish starts thrashing around and trying to spin, it can break its jaw or split its lip and that's not what you wanna do. The most important thing to me when I'm musky fishing is the conservation of the fish because you know there's so few of them where I live and the fish that I fish for, there's not a huge population of them, but you also just, you need to respect them. That's the biggest thing is like learning how to handle them, know what tools you need, being quick with the release and just letting other people catch them too. That's the beauty of it, catch and release. It's very, very big in the musky world. But I have seen a lot of guys use the Boca grips that swivel around, so if you have a really deeply hooked fish and you do need a little extra help holding their lip so you can get up in there and do whatever work you need to do, that's definitely the route that you wanna take. So another reason that I'm not fishing for musky today and along the lines of conservation is because the water temperature is 83 degrees. So once that water temperature hits 75 to 80, you really don't want to fish for them. And the reason that you don't want to fish for them is because when you're fighting them, they're literally going to fight to their death. So they fill up with lactic acid 
and since the water temperature is so high, the oxygen levels are going to be lower and it's going to be harder for them to get rid of that lactic acid that builds up during a fight and it's going to be a delayed mortality. So they may not die, you may be able to release them and they can go swim away and be perfectly fine, so you think, but you know the next day they couldn't get rid of that lactic acid and they will die. So once that water temperature hits 75 for me, I'm not doing any musky fishing. A lot of musky fishermen stick with this rule and I would suggest that to you guys as well. Now when it comes to handling the fish, when you get them unhooked sitting in the bag and you want to pull them out for a picture, measurement, video, whatever, you want to grab his gill plate and you slide your hand all the way up to the front. You can lock your thumb in under his chin. You definitely don't want to go over top of his mouth. You want to keep that thumb locked up underneath. And you're going to lift him out of the bag and support his belly as quickly as you can. You never want to hold a musky vertically because that is another thing that will kill them pretty quickly. Always want to keep them parallel to the water. So get them out for a quick picture. And the other thing you want to do is keep their head towards the water. So if they start thrashing around and freaking out, boom, you throw him in, he's good to go. So there's a couple tips for you guys on how to handle these fish if you do get lucky enough to catch one and what tools you're gonna need to make sure that these fish stay alive. So now let's talk about the fun stuff. We're gonna get into some of the rods and reels and a couple different baits for you guys. So one of the coolest, most beautiful things about musky fishing are some of these crazy baits that you get to throw around for them. Things that, you know, normally as a bass fisherman, I'd look at and be like, wow, that looks absolutely ridiculous. But the fish eat them. I mean, rubber baits like this, which is called a U-boat. We have a Medusa, just giant freaking baits with humongous treble hooks on there. And then you have baits that are getting a little bit smaller. And these are Phantom Softail gliders, which are awesome. I've done very well on them. You can see this one's pretty beat up. And then probably the most popular musky fishing bait is a bucktail. For you guys that are bass fishermen or trout fishermen, it's just a gigantic inline spinner. This is actually a smaller one too. It's not too big, but this is probably the highest producing musky catching lure in the world is a bucktail. So they're very fun baits to throw and that's gonna lead us into what you're gonna be throwing them on. And you're not really gonna be able to throw one of these big rubber baits on a bass rod maybe a swim bait rod but they're just so big and they're so heavy that you need something really big that can handle this so personally for me this is a great all-around rod that i've been using this is an eight foot six assault stick i think they actually call this a medium heavy in the musky world um, it's perfect for gliders i can get away with throwing decent sized rubbers on it and bucktails it's a it's a perfect all-around rod for me I'm throwing a Tranx 300 with this 80 pound braid to a 100 pound fluorocarbon leader. Yeah, 100 pound fluorocarbon leader. It's thick, two C's. But another thing you can do is use a wire leader. Um, I think I used to use steel and that actually works really well with the gliders because it has zero stretch at all and just like the slightest tap of the rod, it'll get that thing darting around pretty good. But last time I was fishing, I had this 100 pound fluorocarbon leader, so that's what I had tied on. Uh, so the reason that you wanna use such heavy gear goes again with the fish conservation. You know, you can catch fish on 10 pound test. You've all probably heard the story of people catching musky on a Ned rig with eight pound test and a spinning rod, but you don't wanna fight these fish for 30 or 40 minutes because again, with the lactic acid and wearing themselves out completely, that will definitely happen. So we're not just using these big rods, to throw the big baits, but also to get the fish in the bag as quickly as possible to prevent them from literally fighting to their death. I know if I hit a branch or a twig or anything right now, I'm gonna, boom! Yeah, I know. Freak out. <laughs> oh, got him, got him, got him. Oh, yeah, I got you. Hell yeah! There she is. There she is. Come on. Ready? Bring her up here. We're gonna get in that baby. Bring her up. Come on, baby. Feather Ready? it. You got a feather. Yeah, it. she's good. We don't fit in the damn night. Well, there we go. Let's go, baby. As you just called it. Yeah. So, for those of you guys that are getting into musky fishing, say you don't have a giant 
musky rod like this or a big reel, um, you can definitely get away with throwing some baits on a big swim bait rod or on a big flipping stick. And I understand how it is. Like I started off using all my bass gear and a couple of musky lures that I did have. But as you progress in the sport and chasing these fish, you will want to upgrade to a bigger rod. But just make sure that when you're fishing for them, um, you know that you're not completely maxing out your rod because it'll definitely break. And there are other advantages for using such a big rod because every time you cast, you wanna do what we call a figure eight. And the reason that you're doing a figure eight every cast is because musky are very curious animals. So they may not even be hungry, but if they see this Medusa going over their head, they're gonna go up and see what it is just to see it. They may not be hungry whatsoever, but they'll follow a bait all the way from the end of your cast to the boat. And then that's why you want to figure eight because the fish sometimes do not even care that the boat is there. They'll follow this bait in a circle around the boat and then you can trigger them into eating, basically like force feeding them. So a way that it's been explained to me is kind of like a game of keep away or like cat and mouse, you know? So if you're playing with your cat and you're doing some sort of erratic action with a toy or whatever it may be, and he doesn't really care about it, but then you just do something the right way and it triggers the cat to start going after that bait and go after that toy. It's the same thing with a muskie and one of these baits. So if you have a fish that follows you in and you're figure eighting him, figure eighting him, figure eighting him, he's not really showing you too much interest, but then on a turn, you either give it like two really quick twitches or you go through the straight really fast or whatever it may be something can trigger that fish into eating. And that's gotta be one of the coolest things about fishing for muskie. And while I've never caught a fish in the figure eight, I've had plenty of follows, I've had plenty of chances at it. It's the most exhilarating thing that I've ever experienced fishing. And it's super cool. And I would suggest it to anybody. It gets very addicting and it's super fun. There's a little info on your figure eights. I'm actually gonna rig one of these up and I'm gonna show you guys how I figure eight. We're going to be using a bucktail for this little demonstration. Hopefully you guys will be able to see it. It's nice and shiny. And a quick tip for you when you're casting your big musky baits, whether it's a bucktail or one of the big rubbers or gliders, the best thing to do when you cast is right before that bait hits the water, stop the spool with your thumb because it'll straighten the bait out and it'll keep the line from getting all tangled up in the hooks. So I'm not the best figure eater in the world, but I will show you what I've learned. So you never want to slow this retrieve down. So if you have a muskie following and you're speeding it up, normally that's going to trigger them to eat. Because if you're reeling a bait in and you see a muskie following it and you stop, that's not what happens in nature. So if a bait fish is being chased down by a muskie, is it ever going to slow down? No, it's going to speed up and try to get away from it. So that's kind of what triggers these fish as well. So you'll probably mess up the first few follows that you have because it's just natural. Like when you see this giant log behind your bait and you realize, oh man, that's actually a muskie, you'll freeze. I did that the first probably 10 times, but you do get better. So just keep practicing, keep expecting there to be a fish behind your bait and you won't get caught off guard. But let's get into this figure eight real quick. Let me find a spot, here we go, okay. So when you're bringing your bait in, one thing you wanna keep in mind is that you wanna transition into the figure eight as naturally as possible. So once the bait gets about here, you want to start bringing it in and you're going to want to go really high on the corners and then bring it down low and into the boat on the straightaway and then really high on the corners again and then bring it back down to the straightaway towards the boat high on the corners and then back low and straight down toward the boat now the reason you want to do wide turns is because think about how big some of these fish are so if you're doing really quick, short little eights, they're not gonna be able to actually chase it around in a circle. They're just gonna get under it and get discombobulated and just give up. So the wider you make your turns, the more of a chance they'll be able to follow it around and actually physically be able to go follow that bait all the way around the figure eight and eat. Now that you guys have gotten some info on the tools you'll need and the rod and reel setup that I throw, uh, let's talk about some of the baits. So again, the bucktail that I have rigged up here, it's probably one of the most popular musky fishing baits. This is also a bait you're gonna wanna throw, I wanna say in late spring and then through summer and fall. But once the water starts getting a little bit cold, that's when you're gonna wanna switch from throwing bucktails to something more like gliders and big rubbers. So as far as rubber baits go, 
they work all year super cold water super warm water when they're transitioning from spawn into their summer patterns or when they're getting into fall and fall is actually the best time that you can be fishing for muskie because they're trying to fatten up for winter and they get super super aggressive in the winter my favorite baits to throw are going to be gliders like these phantom soft tails so these are really easy to work you basically are fishing it like a spook it's going to be like a foot or two beneath the surface of the water sometimes deeper some of them sink a little bit quicker but i personally like the gliders that i can see because it's just fun to watch fish either follow it or come up and smash it on virtually the surface you know it's a walking bait so it glides left to right left to right and all you're doing is just reeling up the slack and giving it really slow taps of the rod um, and you're going to vary the pause and keep it kind of erratic so you might do you know be reeling and do one two three pops so it goes left right left and then just let it pause and hang there it's a very cool thing to see a fish come up and smoke one of these bad boys with the rubbers there's really no wrong way to fish these i've caught fish reeling them straight in, just a straight retrieve. You can do sweeps to the left, you can do sweeps up, you can do sweeps to the right, you can do all three of them. It doesn't really matter, you just want this bait. Personally, in my experience, the best way to, that I've fished it is kind of varying from like a nice right sweep and then an overhead and then a right, right, and an overhead and giving this bait some hang time. So like when you're pulling it and these tails are just wiggling their way down, it's really good for getting some big fish. You can also jig with these basically. So let it fall straight to the bottom and then just rip it off the bottom and let it fall back and then rip it off the bottom and let it fall back. It's a good way to catch them in the winter and that's actually one of my best producing techniques for winter muskie fishing. I really hope you guys enjoyed this quick muskie 101 tutorial. Let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to see a little bit more information on muskie fishing and also let me know if you guys have ever gone out muskie fishing or if you're gonna chase some this fall. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on Carl's YouTube channel and I'll catch you guys on the next one.